Stefanie Dittmar took off from Karlshagen at Pinemunde in 1941. On becoming airborne, the undercarriage was jettisoned and the aircraft demonstrated an amazing rate of climb. Later, Dietmar was towed to altitude to conserve fuel, when he achieved 623 miles per hour, easily breaking the existing world speed record. Though naturally this was not claimed due to wartime security. During that record-breaking flight, Heine Dittmar probed the edges of what was later to be called the sound barrier. Heine Dittmar was not the only test pilot to fly the 163. Hannah Reich also test flew one of the early models from the Messerschmitt airfield at Lechfeld, and she later flew a more powerful version, now named Comet, which made a great impression on her. And I can only tell you, it was fascinating. It was like thundering through the skies, sitting on a cannon ball, like being intoxicated by speed. It was not difficult to uh, fly it. It was only an overwhelming impression. At the end of the airfield, of the airfield boundary, you already reached about 500 miles per hour, and with constant speed, you were climbing up in one and a half to two minutes into a height of 30,000 feet. Exhilarating though it undoubtedly was, after six minutes the comet's rocket fuel was exhausted, and the world's fastest fighter became the world's fastest glider. But the landing was not the only difficulty. The fuel used by the comet consisted of Seestoff and Tiestoff. They were basically methanol alcohol and hydrogen peroxide, which are highly incompatible. A few drops of one on the other produced a violent reaction. Tiestoff was capable of spontaneous combustion when in contact with any organic material. which, of course, included the pilot. In view of the nature of the fuel, Hannah Reich, like all Comet pilots, had special protective clothing. But despite this protection, some pilots were dissolved alive by the murderer's fuel. Hannah Reich well remembers the dangers of test-flying the Messerschmitt comets. I experienced two comrades blowing to pieces when their plane exploded. On one of Hannah Reich's test flights, as she was towed into the air, the undercarriage refused to jettison. I couldn't get rid of it. At the same time, this often happens when you have an accident that many things at the same time go out of work. So all electrical operating instruments were kaput. Um, also the landing flaps and so many and also the radio connection with the tow pilot and with the ground so it was difficult to uh, let the tow pilot know that i wanted to come into a great height so for 10 minutes he circled uh, in a height of about um, uh, uh, nine uh, 900 feet um, but i stubbornly remained on the rope and suddenly, and I only w watched when, they, uh, when the ambulance and the stretcher and the fire truck and all uh, came to receive me. And I thought, said, oh, I hope I will come quite safely down. But suddenly, uh, the tow pilot went up to uh, 9,000 feet and I released the cable and I tried with positive and negative G Gs to get rid of the undercarriage, but I felt that it, I didn't succeed. But I hope to bring this um, test plane to the ground safely because such a test uh, plane has many, many uh, valuable instruments. And, um, but because 
all electrical operating instrument didn't work. Uh, also not the landing flaps. Um, the last side slip, I had to come to approach the airfield in a greater height as normally in order to be sure that you will reach the place and you had then to lose high with a cautious side slip but this destroyed the whole airflow because it was only wing without tail plane. It came out of control and crashed in the field that was completely demolished and my head uh, came to an instrument and I suffered. Uh, my nose was, I have an artificial nose and it's quadruple of fractured head and, and vertebra broken and many things. So after having been five months hospitalized, I was well again spurned on by the only burning wish to continue as test pilot again. By 1944, comets had become operational, single gun camera record, and the pilot of that comet was himself killed a few days later, when his 163 fighter blew up on takeoff for no apparent reason. Soon after that, all the operational comets were immobilized on their airfield at Brandis due to the bombing of the only factory making the special fuel. On recovering from her multi- the Troika Schlepp, 